let's look at some basic rules of probability. If you remember, we have the sample space, which we draw, this is the idea of a Venn diagram, we draw the sample space as a rectangular box. Now the sample space, remember, in an experiment, the sample space contains all possible outcomes of the experiment. So if you ask, what's the probability of observing something from the sample space? The idea of a Venn diagram, and again this is called a Venn diagram, the idea is the following. You view the area as a probability. So if you ask, what's the probability of S? Well, since S contains all possible outcomes of an experiment, the probability of S is 1. And so the area of the rectangular region of the sample space is equal to 1. If you take an event in a sample space, so consider a rectangular box, this is the sample space A, and you have an event, a subset A of the sample space S, and you ask geometrically, what's the probability of A? How do we represent it, again, simply by the area of the region in the Venn diagram? So this is really all it is, a Venn diagram gives you a way to visualize probability as the area of the corresponding region. Let's look at some basic rules of probability. Well, we already saw that P of S is 1, because an, an experiment will always contain, uh, will always um, have an outcome, and S contains all possible outcomes, the probability of S is 1. Another rule of probability is the probability of the empty set. Now the empty set contains nothing, so we're asking what's the probability of observing nothing? And the answer is zero. We will always have an outcome, and so the odds of observing nothing are actually zero. Probably the, or at least one of the most useful rules of probability is the complement rule. So consider the sample space S with an event A. So if you want the probability of A, you can obtain it directly by finding the area of the region, or what you can do is you can consider A complement, right? If you remember, A complement is everything outside of A. So if this is A, A complement is everything outside of A. So the idea is, well, you can add the area of A in a different way. So take 1. This is the area of the rectangle. So now you've added the area of the entire rectangle. And if you remove the area of A complement, if you remove all this, then you're left with the area of A. So if you throw away what you don't want from everything, you're left with what you want. And this is called the complement rule. So why is this useful? It is useful because if you cannot find P of A directly, if the event A is too complicated, well, its complement will be much simpler. That's the duality. If you can find P of A directly, go ahead. If A is very complicated, Use the complement rule because the more complicated A is, the simpler A complement will be. And that's the complement rule. This is the next rule is called the inclusion exclusion principle. Suppose you consider, again, a Venn diagram. And I consider two events A and B. So consider event A and event B. And what if you ask for the probability of A union B? If you remember, the union means that you combine A and B together. You take everything in A, everything in B, and combine them into a larger set that contains every element of A and every element of B. 
So in the Venn diagram, A union B is the area of this region. So again, if you can find this probability directly, go ahead. But sometimes you can't. So you can express the probability of A union B as probabilities of simpler events. So let's see how we can actually figure this out. Go back to the same picture. And now we have, again, our sample space S, event A, and event B. So we ask for the probability of A union B. So let's add first the area, because again, we want the entire area of this region. So let's add first the area of A, the area of a smaller region. So now we have the area of this region. Let's add the area of the other smaller region, B. So now we've added the area of this region. And if you look, we've counted everything once, except for the area common between A and B. We've counted this, actually, two times. But we only have to count it once. We have to count it only once. So the idea is, well, let's remove it. If you count this twice, and you, move, and you remove it once, then you're left with the area of the exact region. And what's common to A and B, of course, is what we call the intersection. And that is the principle of inclusion-exclusion. By adding P of A and P of B, we're adding everything we want, except we're counting the intersection twice. Remove it once, and you're back to counting it once. The next result is called the partition theorem. There's a more general statement in the notes. I'll give you the simplest version, but also for us, the more useful one. Suppose you have the following setup. You have your sample space. And then you have an event B, say this region. And of course, everything else is B complement. Consider a third event, event A. And now ask, well, what's the probability of A? And the idea is, from this, is if you want, again, geometrically from the Venn diagram, the probability of A is simply the area of region A. But sometimes event A may be a bit too complicated, and you want to split it up into two parts in this case, or three or four or any number of parts. So think of it, instead of counting the area of A in total, just in one go, we'll first add the area of this part. Well, that's the region common to both A and B, so that's the probability of A intersects B. Of course, we're missing the second half, so we have to add the probability of what's common between A now and B complement. And again, that is the intersection of A with B complement. So we've broken down the problem into two parts. The probability of event A and B, plus the probability of A and B complement. And that is the complement, the partition theorem, with the complement B and B complement.